It's a pleasure to be here. The title of my topic is 40 and e stick volume analysis of the fetal heart. Wow. Now, what do I mean by wow? The wow is, as you'll see in a few moments, we've struggled with stick evaluation of the heart for a number of years. In 2003, we published the first paper describing the use of stick technology. And since that time, over 100 publications have occurred, or have, have been presented in the literature. And one of the problems, of course, when doing stick acquisition is that we have sometimes fetal movement or maternal movement that creates artifact in the B and C planes. So the problem that we have with stick technology, while most all vendors now offer this in their machines, we have movement artifact in the B and C planes, and we have also inadequate resolution many times in the B and C planes. So what I'm going to do for the next uh, 14 and a half minutes is really drill down on this concept to show you how the two technologies work with this new probe and how it really solves the problem for us in the BNC planes to make our job easier. So what must the new electronic probe do? It, for example, it has to take it. It says, what must the electronic probe technology do to be beneficial to make volume analysis of the fetal heart more practical? One, it must limit or eliminate artifact in the BNC planes. Two, increase the resolution in the BNC planes. So let's now look, for example, at the two options that Robbie showed you, for example, in his presentation that this new probe offers. One is real-time 4D. <clears throat> in the past, with the previous mechanical probe, the real-time 4D was there, but the frame rate was so low that it was really not very useful. And secondly, it offers now e-stick, e meaning electronic. And with the e-stick, we have a chance to take and acquire, over a shorter period of time, higher resolution images, by, by accumulating what are called subvolumes, which I'll show you in a moment, to create the volume that we're going to analyze. So let's now begin with real-time 4D. The way that it is accomplished is as follows. The first thing that happens when you put the probe on, you identify the four-chamber view. Then you set the angle of acquisition of the B-plane, and I'll show you why this is important in just a moment. Thirdly, you acquire the real-time 4D volume. You can record from 2 to 10 or 20 seconds, however you like. You have the option to isolate a single cardiac cycle for analysis. And, of course, you have no movement artifact. That's the key thing about the 4D, real-time 4D. There's no movement artifact in the B or C planes because you're acquiring these volumes so quickly. If we look at the concept of how we improve the, the frame rate, because that's the key element, what happens here, this illustrates, for example, this upper diagram, a large B-angle sweep from the head down through the lower pelvis. You see that we see... Four, cardiac, four volume frames per second, which is too slow for analysis. By narrowing the B window, we can go up to 11 volume frames per cardiac cycle and even higher depending upon the depth of the image and, of course, the adipose tissue of the patient. Now, in, in, in our practice, for example, half of our patients have BMIs over 30, so that presents a little bit of a problem sometimes. Now, once you've done that, whether you're, <clears throat> you're on the machine or whether you're in 4D view, for example, here this list this indicates all the volumes that are acquired in a two-second sweep. <clears throat> we then can take and identify by dialing in, so to speak, the complete single cardiac frame or, 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 or cycle. And once that is done, you can then, do, of course, do your an analysis uh, more carefully. Now, one thing which is important to realize is that if we look at the acquisition rate, which is on the screen, you may see 39 hertz, 32 hertz, 27 hertz, depending on what you're acquiring it at. But it's important to realize that the hertz, the frame rate, so to speak, is really approximately half of the hertz that you see on the screen because a cardiac cycle in the fetus usually lasts less than half a second. So what I've done here, just to illustrate the principle of adjusting the resolution, these are B-plane images of the short axis of the heart. You see the tricuspid valve, the pulmonary valve, the mitral valve, and, of course, the ventricular walls. So at a mid-resolution of 17, you have a frame rate or a volume rate of 7. I'm saying if you have a mid-resolution, you have a frame rate of 17. If we go to a higher resolution, notice the quality of the image improves. Our volume rate drops down to 10. At the maximum resolution, the, the volume rate is 4. So what you have to do in your, in your acquiring of the images is determine what volume rate that you want and what resolution, and those are the two variables that you play with by adjusting the length of the B-mode B sweep. We also, for example, can enhance the image with a VCI. That's done here, as you can see, a little bit more detail in the valve motion and the walls of the heart. And this just demonstrates that over the gestational age periods, at whether you're 20 weeks, 25 weeks, 33 weeks, or 30, 
35 weeks, we see that the, Im the image resolution is, is really excellent, and we've simply just adjusted the resolution so we can maintain the frame rate in appropriate range for diagnosis. Now, color Doppler can be done, or power Doppler with the real-time 4D Pro, but because the volume rate is so slow, we choose not to really use it. You can use it in the, 20, in the 20th week, the 18th week, but because the rate is so slow, what happens? You get a merging of systolic and diastolic colors, so you can't really differentiate systole and, di and diastole as clearly as you like, so we recommend not using it for that. Now, if we look at the e-stick, the e-stick is an uh, interesting tool, as we mentioned, uh, was mentioned earlier. And what happens, and Robbie had a nice pulsating uh, uh, image of that. What I've done, I've just kind of done this to kind of illustrate the principles. I think it's important to understand how this works. Instead of saying, well, I put the probe on it, it does magic. It's important for you to understand what has gone into the technology to allow us to use this. Well, first of all, the, what, the, what the system does is you, play, you identify the four-chamber view, and you place the probe and identify the beating heart. The system automatically detects the fetal heart rate. And in doing so, it can then adjust what are called the volume, the width of the subvolume. So it, it says, for example, or doesn't say, just kind of computes this. Here's a heart rate of 150. Here is the widest subvolume I can now create and acquire. So once that's done, then it acquires the subvolumes. Now, what's interesting about this, unlike the, the traditional stick, where you had to alter the, the, the width uh, and the time to maximize the resolution. With the e-stick, there's no distance uh, problem. I can set the distance in the B-plane from the, from the uh, umbilicus or from the uh, pelvis to the neck if I wanted to because there's no, it does not affect the image quality. And thirdly, what it does after identifying the subvolumes and, and determining the, the frame rate per each subvolume, then it compiles this, it stitches together the, the subvolumes and creates a single volume for analysis. Now, there's a potential for artifact. If the fetus moves, unlike the traditional stick, the e-stick, because it sweeps much faster and, and acquires more data than the, the mechanical stick, the, uh, it has, and has a far higher frame rate, we still sometimes can see this artifact. Now, if you look here on the screen, you'll see the purple lines, and you can see these lines located here and here, according, uh, which are equivalent to the purple lines. Those are the subvolumes that it's acquired, and because of movement, they jump out at you, and you can see that there's an artifact for movement. So this is, of course, something that we don't see very often, but that's what is showing you the subvolume is being demonstrated. Now, if we compare, for example, the resolution, I'm going to compare now the resolution, the A and the B and the C planes. On the left, we have the real-time 4D from the same fetus at 25 weeks of gestation. If you look at this image, it looks very nice but the image on the right with the e-stick has a little bit higher resolution. If we look at the B-plane, which for, for me, the B-plane has been a disaster most of the time with traditional stick, because I always seem to get artifact unless I spend 35 minutes trying to get the perfect acquisition. Well, with the e-stick, for example, and the 4D, uh, real-time 4D, that's virtually eliminated. And you can see again, look at the, again, the details of the anatomy. We see the fish mouth of the mitral valve, the tri tricuspid valve, the pulmonary valve, very nicely demonstrated. Now, here's the real nice benefit of this technology, the C-plane. How many of you have thought the C-plane was there just to annoy you? Because most of the time, the C-plane, when you're looking at the heart, it's garbage. You can't tell where you are. You have no idea because the resolution is so poor. It's just, you thought, why do they even show the C-plane? For what purpose are they doing this? But look at the C-plane in both of these image acquisitions. This is the two-chamber view of the left ventricle and the two-chamber view of the left ventricle here. Notice the, the identification of the corresponding chambers. The resolution is dramatically improved. It allows you now for the very first time to really use the C-plane in a way you've never done before. Now, we also, for example, with e-stick, have choices of quality. We can have a low-quality image, which this is not low-quality to me. It looks very nice for a fetus at 32 weeks. And this is a higher quality image. There's a slight movement artifact right here. But again, look at the B-plane image of the short axis. It's really almost looking as though you just simply put a 2D probe and turn it 90 degrees and obtain a short axis of the heart. And of course, color Doppler is spectacular. It uh, really has high resolution. With the old stick approach, you would see the color kind of lag. It really didn't correlate with the 2D image. With the stick technology, it looks as though you're looking at it live with no artifactual changes. So if we, if we now drill down on the, 
uh, the drawbacks and the benefits of each of these two approaches, the real-time 4D or the e-stick, what you see, for example, the real-time has no artifact in the BNC planes, period. You don't see artifact because it's acquiring it so fast, it creates a single volume. However, the resolution is a little bit lower than the e-stick. The e-stick has a potential for artifact, but because it sweeps so fast, you rarely see it. And it has the ability to have higher resolution and also has some other properties we'll see in a moment. So the next five minutes, and then we're watching my clock very carefully. I want to make sure Dr. Benoit has this full time. I'm going to now share with you just how we would apply using these technologies to things that we do all the time. For example, we're going to look at the vocal acquisition, Simpson's rule for determining the ejection fraction, and, of course, 2D and M mode measurements. Let's look at this very quickly. This is a diagram we just happily had just traced from a real-time 4D image, a, a fetal heart, and if you look here in the A, B, and C planes, you'll notice how clean this tracing has been in the vocal determination. Now, uh, our colleagues in Israel, for example, have published and others have published elegant work using vocal to determine in diastolic and in systolic volumes and computed cardiac output as well. And here we have in real-time 4D, I'm using actually, uh, here we see very nicely displayed the corresponding tracing to compute the values. If we look, for example, at using uh, um, OmniView, we can take and draw a line down the left ventricular chamber, see the, the two-chamber view here, and I've done the very same thing, but the software in the system has a thing called Simpson's Rule, and I can actually trace the ventricles and compute ejection fraction, again, in a much more precise fashion. Using real-time, or excuse me, using e-stick, e M-mode, I have the ability to display the mode on the right, and if for measurement purposes, you can be much more accurate determining end diastolic values or end systolic values for the various chambers that you want to measure. Now, finally, if we look at some other imaging tools, Robbie's showing you some nice pictures, multiplanar, TUI, OmniView, and Render. Here we have traditional multiplanar view, and again, the multiplanar view in the, a, B, in the B and C planes are higher resolution than we've ever seen before, allowing us to see more detail. The B plane, this is the B, these are B plane uh, TUIs. You can see again the aortic arch, the short axis of the valves, the, the short axis of the outflow tracks. Again, high resolution and no artifact. And also in the C plane, as I've shown you previously. Uh, in the Omni view, very quickly, if you find the three vessel view, you drop a line down the main pulmonary artery ductus, the transverse arch, and the superior vena cava. And here you see all those views the ductal arch, the aortic arch, and the IVC nicely, quickly displayed. Of course, as Robbie showed you, you can have the inversion mode, and also you have, for example, this real-time 4D of the heart. And finally, in closing, uh, Robbie showed you some nice examples. This, to me, when I first saw this, I fell off my chair. I did a, a color, to, you know, regular color acquisition, and you know how color acquisitions go when you render them. They look, kind of look okay. When they pushed this button and I saw this, I thought, what in the world have you done? And it's elegant. And you can have you can spend more time playing with this tool. You'll never get enough sleep at night because you're playing with all these little variables to take and make these unbelievable pictures. Here's an example of a VSD. Here's a normal heart, and I've changed. I've I've set the PRF so that I can see more detail. But here we have the two ventricular chambers, MPA ductus, etc. On the real time, the balance was set low, so it wasn't showing the VSD as clearly. But here's the corresponding rendered image. And if you increase, decrease, uh, change the balance on it. Of course, you see it here in the 2D and the corresponding VSD. Here we see an example of pulmonary stenosis and a VSD here in this, as we see it here. So, my last slide besides the next one to follow. <laughs> a universal observation. Everybody in this room knows that this is true, I hope, that time is money. What does that mean? If I spend more time playing with the tools and try, or trying to acquire better images, I struggle with that, I'm doing a heart study, it takes longer to do, I see fewer patients, or I go home later at night. If I have a tool, and I've always told the GE folks and others, save me time because it saves me money or saves me you know, expenses. I mean, these are related. And so with this technology, and the last slide I'll show you, to me, that last slide says it all. It saves me time. It gives me a higher quality image. I can use it as a better diagnostic tool, especially in the BNC planes. I can use all the tools that are there more efficiently and more effectively. And so it really makes a difference. So, again, the summary, it removes artifact that we have seen in the past so much of a stick. It enhances the image resolution because of the qualities of the probe. 
and it really is 4D volume imaging on steroids. Thank you very much.